Hi everyone, it's Kim here. Today's video is one that I've been considering for a long time. It's something that's been on my mind, but I've been trying to figure out the best way to do it. I've wanted to do something to go through all the games I've played in 2022. Not necessarily games that were just released this year, but anything I've played this year. And talk about which ones I loved, what I didn't love, and which ones are all-time favourite. Now, before I start, just keep in mind that these are my views, this is how I feel about the game, it may not be the same as you, which is totally fine, where everybody has different tastes and that's a really good thing. And let me know if yours are different or the same in the comments, I want to hear it. The other thing I will say before I start is that this tier list is available on, available on Tier Maker. I will put a link to it in the description so you can fill this out and put your rankings in the Discord if you want, because I'd love to see them. All right, I think it's time to start, but before we do, we definitely need some new names for these ranks. S is going to be top 20. Now, top 20 means they're in the top 20 games of my entire life. Like, they are lifelong favourites to me. They're games I will revisit over the years and they just have, you know, meant a lot to me. A tier will be the awesome games. They're the ones that are really awesome games. I enjoy playing them, but they won't necessarily be games that I revisit many times over the years. After awesome, we will have pretty good. The pretty good games, they're okay. They were fun. I don't think I'll be playing them again. There were things that I liked, but things I that were just okay. The C tier, we're going to call average. These are the games that are average. I think that's the best way to describe them. <laughs> and the D tier will be not a fan. And those are the games that are games that I just did not mesh well with. I played them and either they were okay, but I didn't like them overall, or they were uh, games that I just didn't enjoy playing. In the F tier, we're going to call Get No, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say get in the bin, but that sounds almost too mean. I'll just say no. <laughs> I think no covers what I am thinking about these games pretty well. Alright, we'll get started. I thought the first one to start with would obviously be Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing New Horizons has been an absolute game changer for me. It's what made me finally start a YouTube channel after years of wanting to do it. There is nowhere else this could go but in top 20. This is a, a lifetime great, this game, for me. It's just, I'm so grateful for everything that it has given me. Not just in how much fun I've had and the hours I've put into it and the creative fun we have with it, but the friends that I've made um, thanks to Animal Crossing, I am eternally grateful for it. And I know there are things that aren't perfect with it, but honestly, for a Nintendo Switch game that struggles to run on the Switch sometimes, because the Switch is a pretty low-spec console compared to the others, it's pretty amazing, that game. Next up is Little Wood. Little Wood I played off stream this year. I played it in I think March and April, maybe a little bit earlier. It's a similar to Stardew Valley in some aspects, but it also has a lot of things like a really fun card game you play and just a lot of other things that make it different. And I really, really enjoyed this game, but I don't know when I'll be picking it up again. That's the only thing that's stopping it from growing into awesome. I will say for its price point, it is definitely awesome. Cozy Grove is one of those games that I heard a lot about, a lot of people really loving it and it just looked super cute. So I played that earlier this year and I'm sorry but I'm not a fan. I really found the character super cute. I had some really funny moments on stream, like the time that one of the birds the game suggested I should call it Shati Fast. <laughs> that still makes me laugh now. But I really struggled with the fact that the the land would 
gain color throughout the day with all the hard work I did but then the next day it would be back in the like sepia color and I just it just made me feel like I was going backwards every day and like, I didn't like that unpacking I played in a bunch of nighttime streams earlier this year it is such a calm relaxing game I really had fun playing it online with other people in the chat with me and I definitely will be playing that game again it just it just is so relaxing and nice and I know there are things like apparently there's a I don't know if it's a different ending or an alternate level something I that there's just more to that game than you would think Grow Song of the Evertree was another game that I played alone off stream and I am going to put it in the pretty good tier purely because well firstly I it was absolutely stunning it's a beautiful game it looks better on PC I played it on a Nintendo Switch but it was still a very nice to look at game I loved the sound and the music and it was just really cool creating these worlds and seeing the weird and wild things that would grow up in these in these biomes the downside however was that porting it over to switch there were glitches there were some really funny ones <laughs> I mean to be honest they were all pretty funny and they didn't affect gameplay too much but it's a game that I don't know if I'll pick up again um, I would have put it in the awesome tier maybe if I had played it on PC it would be in that awesome tier but for now it's in the pretty good The Little Witch in the Woods is a game that I have only played a few hours of but I wanted to include it because what I did play I really loved it was just quite cute it was relaxing it was nice I do want to pick that game up again at some point and I've put it in the pretty good tier just because it it is it just seems like it'll be a really nice game to play more at some point Mario Kart 8 now I don't know if I should be admitting this I think a lot of you already knew this but I had never played a Mario Kart game before this year I bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in August and absolutely loved it I love car racing games but the problem with a lot of them is they're too complex for me like I just want a fun game that I can go fast and race against other people and Mario Kart definitely fills that gap for me I love it it's gonna be a top now this game I'm putting it in oh gosh I'm gonna put it in top 20 but it's probably more like top 50 <laughs> I only say that because it's an awesome game and I'm gonna play it so much more but there are other games that would go in my top 20 above it I feel really bad with this next one Hoko Life I hate I hate where I'm putting it and the thing with Hoko Life is it is a game that is so much bigger than I thought there is so much to do the town is huge it's so much bigger than I initially thought but there are a couple of issues with it that put it into average for me the first thing is the art style is nice but it feels kind of grey I don't know if anybody else has felt that when playing it but it has always felt kind of grey for me the other issue that I have with Hoko Life is that that you can customize so firstly this is a good thing at first you can customize furniture and items and build your own furniture and do a lot with it the customization is huge huge and it looks amazing it looks like it'll be so much fun but it's so hard to do I could not even do a straight table in it that might be different on PC but I just found it so so messy it was just yeah <laughs> Hako Life I think if it was just a bit more of a colorful game with a little a few tweaks it would have been in the pretty good or awesome tier Sims 4 is another one where I struggle to put it and the reason is that I have played the Sims series since the very beginning it's easily one of my most favorite game series of all time however Sims 4 is just lacking in so many ways they keep bringing out expansion pack and item packs and all these things which is great 
but I can't even walk around or drive around my neighborhood. And I could do those things in previous games. I just, oh, I, I, I war with myself about Sims 4. I, I have put a lot of hours in it. I actually stopped playing the week that I got Animal Crossing um, back in 2020, the week that it released, and then picked it up again in August this year. And I haven't been playing it as much as I thought I would when I picked it up again. I do want to play it a lot more, but it's just those little things that they changed in The Sims 4 that stop it being a top 20 game for me. If it was any other Sims game, it would be straight in that top 20. Uh, by that I mean Sims 1, 2, and 3. Overlets! Overlets is so good! I just... I think it's one of my favourite games that I found in 2022. I love the art style, I love the music, it's so cute, the original words that they have for everything. I started playing in September when I had surgery and I think I played 50 hours that first week. I was stuck on the couch and it was the perfect game to help me recover and actually sit still, <laughs> which for me is quite hard sometimes. I just absolutely adore it. I've started replaying it on stream over on Twitch uh, in the last few weeks and I'm having just as much fun as I did the first time. And that game is just so, so good that it's gone straight into top 20. Stardew Valley is another one that's going straight into top 20. I have been playing that game for several years. I started on iPad and actually put several hundred hours in on the iPad. And then when I got a Switch, I started playing on Switch. And I think I want to try it on PC sometime because some of the mods for that game look amazing. But Stardew Valley, especially for the price you pay, is like amazing. I find it very stressful at first playing that game. Like you just don't have enough energy to do anything. It's just quite hard at first. But as soon as you get into a rhythm, you have more energy, you have a horse. It's so good so good and I can never decide who to marry some of it's, it's just fun I love it I love building friendships and relationships with the people in the town Coral Island is on early release at the moment and that means the game's not finished I adore it okay <laughs> I'm trying to say uh, put that another way but oh gosh I love it so much I it's it, it is incomplete at the moment but they're not apologizing for that if that makes sense it is known to, you know it's early release at the moment but it's a good early release in that it's not crashing all the time there aren't massive bugs there are just areas that are not finished a good example is when you're diving there's a turtle that i think his um speech bubble just says this is placeholder text for this npc <laughs> and when every time i see it it makes me laugh because it's just so funny but because it's not quite finished, it's going into the awesome tier. It's not quite going into the top 20 tier. But I think as soon as it is finished and that it's a full game, it's going straight into that top 20 tier. It does have a lot of similarities to Stardew Valley, but I find it a lot more relaxing to play from day one. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, I was a huge, and I still play it now, a huge, huge fan of the game Theme Hospital. It's still, I still replay it quite often, and it's just, I don't know, uh, they've made other hospital games in the past to kind of replace Theme Hospital, but none of them have. Two Point Hospital came out and it had some of the team from Bullfog working on it, and while it does have some elements and humor like Theme Hospital did, it is its own game and I appreciate that it's its own game. I And the other thing with it is I played Two Point Hospital on the Switch and I have a feeling a lot of the content that is in that game on PC is missing on Switch. Um, there are just certain things that when I would look online for help they mentioned all these things like rooms and items and stuff that did not exist in the Two Point Hospital I was playing. So maybe someone can answer that for me. Is the Two Point, two point Hospital different on Switch than on PC? Now because of that, I am putting it into the pretty good. I did, mm, I'm pretty close to average, but no, I'm putting it into pretty good. I did really enjoy it. I do want to pick it up again sometime, but it's not something that has really stuck with me. And that brings me 
Two, two Point Campus. Two Point Campus came out this year. It's obviously by the same people as Two Point Hospital. And I started playing it. I've put a few hours in. I can't remember exactly how many hours I was playing on PC. I, I It's okay, but it's just, I don't know. I don't think I'll be going back to it. It's going into average for me. It's not, not a fan because there are elements I did enjoy in it, but yeah it's definitely average for me average a little to the left now <laughs> some of you may have seen my recent review video of a little to the left without giving too much away i have finished this game and i said some things that were quite negative in that review video and now that i've finished i stand by those so much <laughs> I hate to say it, I was so excited to see a little to the left. To me it sounded like a version un of unpacking with slightly challenging puzzles and things like that. But it's not. It's like these puzzles that are just, oh, they're repetitive. They, some of them are so complicated that I would use the hint and I would solve them, but I still don't know how I solved them. I would get angry at it. I just, oh, it's, it's got this beautiful art style. I love the music and it's just a bad game. <laughs> And I feel like I'm the exact target that they were looking for with that game. And it just made me really angry. I feel like I overpay for it as well. I just, oh, it's just not, not good. I think also another really disappointing thing I've discovered now that I've finished is in my review, I talked about the fact that there are these daily puzzles that show up. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Heck yes, I can do daily puzzles and they'll be different. They're the same puzzles that are in the game. There are only 75 levels in that game, which does sound like a lot, but some of them are just, put the books from shortest to tallest, put the plates from smallest to biggest. And they're so repetitive that, and if they're, that to have them as the daily puzzles is almost an insult. I just, especially because you can go to any level in the game at any time so why have these daily puzzles they're not gonna draw people back i'm so disappointed i did want to hold back initially with a little to the left because it is the studio's first game and there are some elements that are amazing like the, as i mentioned before the art style and the music but i can't i'm so sorry i just can't next on the list is pokemon violet but i'm actually going to do pokemon arceus uh, pokemon legends arceus first just because that came out first and it will give a little bit of context for my review for Pokemon Violet. So Pokemon Legends Arceus, um, I don't know if I should admit this in the video, <laughs> another thing I feel like I shouldn't admit, but I've been a fan of Pokemon since the TV series. I used to watch that in the late 90s every day. I absolutely loved it. I had never actually played a Pokemon game though. The only game I'd played was Pokemon Go and I mean it's a lot of fun that game but it's not really a game in the sense of the other ones it is a game but it's not you know what i mean i hope it makes sense <laughs> but so arceus was the first one i actually played and it was good i didn't finish it i i think i played about 30 40 hours and it just i don't know there were some elements that i just I was, it, it just kind of put me off finishing. So I'm putting it in pretty good, but uh, yeah, I didn't finish it. <laughs> now, the reason I said that first is because Pokemon Violet came out a few weeks ago. I knew that that was a more traditional Pokemon game. I was really looking forward to trying it out. And even with all of those glitches, even with all of the bugs, I'm loving it so much. It's still such a fun game to play. And granted, the glitches and bugs that I've come across are generally visual ones. They don't actually affect gameplay. I know some people had crashing issues with the box. That's pretty much the only one that I personally have heard that's a glitch that affects gameplay. There may be more, but they're updating it regularly and I putting so many hours in and I'm loving it so that is going straight into awesome it's not going top 20 because it's not perfect but I'm 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 having so much fun 
and we are down to the last game dreamlight valley i think i might get some very disagreeing comments about this one i put it off till last because i didn't want to do it <laughs> but i have to and i'll explain myself so dreamlight valley is going to be free next year it's on early release and so because of that you should expect an, an imperfect unfinished game however people have paid a lot to play that game early and i'm kind of shocked at how glitchy and buggy and broken that game is it's getting better granted 100 percent we're at december now and it's been a few months it is miles ahead of where it was but for firstly a big budget game from a Disney of any of, of like all the companies there are Disney and for the fact that people have been paying huge amounts to play this game early it's just not good enough I think people are, are having fun with it and so they are ignoring that but for me personally I don't want to be treated as a beta tester if I'm paying to pay, play a game early the game should not have been released in the state that it was. Sure, there should have been issues. Sure, there should be incomplete things. But it's a broken game. I just, especially considering it's going to be free next year, it's going into no. The other reason that it's going into no is because I really found things hard work in that game. It's like, oh, can you do this for me? And then it would take like hitting rocks for three hours until I had enough iron for it. And uh, yeah, I'd have a buddy with me, but it would still take forever. Just everything is such hard work in that game. And I just did not find the fun in that. I just, the friendship levels, I don't like. I don't like the way that you do these things for the townspeople. I guess an example is what, of what I'm meaning is Right, very early on, Goofy asks you to make, prepare a dinner for him and Mickey. And it's like, sure, that's fun. I'll prepare a dinner for you. You prepare it and then you never actually get to attend the dinner. You don't get to see them eating it. It's like, what's the point? You just treated me as your chef. Or like, I feel more like I'm being put to work and being used by these townspeople, not becoming friends, not being appreciated. I just, I don't know. <laughs> That's my ranch. I may pick up, after all this, I may pick up Dreamlight Valley sometime next year when it's further along, when there's more to do, when less is broken, and reevaluate that. But for now, it's a big no from me. So there you have it, my ranking games I played in 2022. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? I want to hear it, so tell me in the comments. And do send me on Twitter or on Discord um, your ranking of these games if you do this yourself. I have had so much fun this year on stream and on my channel playing games along with you so thank you so so much for your for your support in 2022 thank you for liking this video and subscribing if you haven't yet and let me know in the comments um not just your thoughts but what games you would like to see me play in 2023 i would love to hear your suggestions i've got some fun things planned and i am probably going to pick up some games that might surprise you but do let me know what you think and what you would like to see me play thank you so so much for watching and stay fresh cheese bags bye